I've got this great French teacher, and she's like barely older than I am. She's like 20 something. So, process of elimination. It wasn't Gillian. It wasn't me. It was Carol. <laughs> so, she's owed it all to uh, herbs and vitamins, I think, and healthy living. I haven't reached the guy who's number No, she's not that old. She is older than she looks. <laughs> She is one of the most dedicated people I know. She's here very early, leaves very late. I never go into the room in the afternoon if there's not a room full of kids there for extra help and tutoring. And um, she's a demanding teacher with high expectations. She's that kitty flash puller among many other of her students who've gone on to bigger and better things. But she also knows how to combine fun, too, with, uh, with hard work. And her, her students adore her. I know. Uh, Carol Black was uh, honored by uh, your pocketbook. <laughs> and uh, I chose some watches I think that uh, everybody will enjoy here. You might say, would you open it up and show everybody the watch? <laughs> this is the certificate that we bought. And uh, we'll read it for you. Okay. Can you hear me okay? All right, I sound like I'm in an echo chamber of the whole thing. 100 years from now, it won't make any difference what type of car I drove or what kind of house I lived in, but it may make a difference and it was important in the life of a child. You have the gratitude of the entire Shawnee Mission Northwest community, but particularly its faculty and students for the years you have devoted to children. Carol Black, Shawnee Mission Northwest, 1994 to 99. Thank you. Norm. <laughs> The retirement bill uh, reads as its inscription, Shawnee Mission Northwest, 1974 to 1999, and is in honor of Helgi Gordon. Well, so much, Leslie, as I wrote my dam. <laughs> Helgi came to Shawnee Mission Northwest 25 years ago, as, as you've seen here today with her pres being presented with her 25 years. Uh, recognition from KU and, and so forth. I came to Shawnee Mission Northwest two years before she did, but somehow she gets to retire before I do, and I'm not, not quite sure that it's fair, but then I guess she was born ten years ahead of me, so... <laughs> about growing up and living through the bombing raids during World War II and living through Catholic boarding school. Uh, she's been able to broaden our horizons a great deal with a perspective that we really weren't able to get from our American written history books. She's instilled a lot of different thoughts and ideas and different, different insights uh, than what we had given thought to before in our lives. The same kind of insight and sharing is what made Helga not just a German teacher, but a very special teacher. She was able to share her first-hand knowledge of life and the German culture. Many of her students will long remember being invited to her house to make German Christmas cookies and to experience the enchantment and beauty of a German Christmas tree with real candles burning rather than electric bulbs. Music has always been an integral part of Helga's life, and no German student's learning would be complete without learning about the great the German composers and their great music. Helga's love of music came through to her students in many ways. Going to see Hansel and Gretel, celebrating Beethoven or Mozart's birthdays, understanding the significance of the Ode to Joy being played when the Berlin Wall came down. Helgi gets the same. A nice watch. Thank you. A nice flag. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I get the good job. <laughs>
that's stuff. And I thought, if I don't make notes and stick to my notes, I'm going to be standing crying and falling over my words for the next hour. So I'm going to have to read my notes. Um, in reference to that um, running naked through the meadow, I really do. Th I really did do that for my 50th birthday, and it's the greatest experience I've had. <laughs> Wild Meadows in Pennsylvania. It's just, and I have a photograph hanging in my house. <laughs> I'm only in this little image, you can't really tell even what it is, but I love, I love Wild Meadows, and it was just a great experience. I had no idea how hard this day would be, so in order not to get modeled, I made a few notes this morning. I've spent almost half of my lifetime here as a teacher at Northwest, and it's been a great adventure. I cannot think of any other profession where you get a clean start every year and where you can teach any subject or any... And on the next <coughs> bell reads, Old Mission Junior High, 1967 to 1987, Shawnee Mission Northwest, 1987-1999, and is engraved in honor of Tom Colley. And it was when we changed to the four-year high school. I remember that one day we were talking about reasons we came over here, and Tom came for quite a profound reason. Northwest had something that a lot of other schools didn't have, and he wanted to be a part of that. He thought it would enrich his teaching experience and make everything better. Do you remember what that was? Air conditioning. <laughs> Tom's wife, Lisa, has been here for two years. Are you there, Lisa? From home, and their names are? Uh, uh, old Floyd Bryan. And my daughter is Jerry. And they went to North. Um, Tom has been teaching Math 1 and uh, for the past few years. And we want you to know that really the rest of us wanted to teach Math 1. <laughs> <laughs> As Ben Rose from Martin. <laughs> we all wanted to teach Math 1 and now we finally get to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all those years with the Math One kids, and we appreciate all the effort you went through with them. Tom has some plans. He's already started a lawn service, and you've probably seen his trailer behind his van many times. He's active in his church, and I'm sure he's going to continue with that. I remember that after his children were no longer teenagers, he still talked about taking the kids down to the river for a canoe trip or a ski. Um, I believe he's going on a big mission trip this summer to Mexico, and uh, we wish you well. We'll miss everything you did for us. Nice certificate for you. Open your watch, you show them. It's a different watch. <laughs> now, I'm not going to hug this one, okay?
When I was at junior high school, I was a basketball coach, and I tried to at an end of the year meeting when we presented awards to our kids. I tried to be funny, and it turned out to be a disaster. <laughs> um, I made the wrong comment about a boy. I was trying to be funny, and he didn't take it that way. So I said today, I will not try to be funny. So if you're laughing, it's just an accident. <laughs> there are a that would make a, a person want to retire. I'm, I'm trying to be serious with you. If you eat that lunch or with a uh, provost, uh, Bill Miller, and have to listen to their jokes for a couple of years, you're, you're ready to retire. <laughs> and if you, uh, the, the learning center, bless their hearts, <laughs> that some of the greatest people are in the learning center. I'm not just talking about my wife, she's great. <laughs> but the things they have to things they have to put up with. Uh, I'm one of them. But <laughs> they have this young man named Tony Pierce. Speculation that he would be in Mass One. <laughs> and um, that's the reason they retired. Six traits for Ivy. <laughs> I never did master that. Um, luckily, my students knew what they were doing. I was letting them grade their own. Live with for so long. 
and I'm going to miss everyone very much. And Tom, thank you. Mission Northwest, 1986-1999, and this bell is engraved in honor of Linda Johnson. Um, I did write this down because my memory lately is not what it used to be. So if you all bear with me. To teach is to touch lives, and Glenda Johnson, throughout her 24 years as a world geography teacher in the Shawnee Mission School District, has certainly accomplished this feat. When, excuse me, I lost my pair of oh, here, I told you. Um, Glenda has been doing what she truly loves, parlaying her vast world travels into a career which has exposed students and colleagues alike to the different perspectives of the world in which we live. When Glenda is teaching a unit on India, she is not merely relating textbook trivia. She is recalling actual lived experiences, which gives her a great measure of credibility with her students. Glenda can actually say, been there, done that, with conviction. Glenda's unbridled enthusiasm for her subject matter is surpassed only by her knowledge, expertise, and commitment to her students, colleagues, and profession. First, Glenda is a committed teacher, one who is satisfied only when her students experience both love of and success in world geography. One of the ways in which she fosters student participation is by creating a classroom that is the epitome of experiential learning, which is one of the tenets of education. There is not a day that has gone by where I would enter Glenda's classroom after the requisite eight-hour day, and I didn't see a crowd of students busily occupied with projects, maps, and bulletin boards. She encourages student involvement in the curriculum long after many teachers have already called it a day, and she gives her students every opportunity to succeed. A case in point regarding... Linda, uh, this is on behalf of the entire social sciences department and uh, Dr. Jaley, a certificate of appreciation. <laughs> Good looking watch. I also like watches, but I don't have a dress watch. I'm, I'm going to wear it for the day. Donna, I, I didn't really recognize the person you were talking about. Thank you. <laughs> and can we any cry today? Donna's very sad, and, and Dr. Harrington said, aren't you sad the other day? And you know what? I'm not sad. <laughs> A lot of you aren't even 36 years old. I want to recap some of the significant um, times in education. His first year was in Savannah, Missouri, a social studies and science teacher. He started in 1963. Uh, after that, to Millbury Junior High, Unified Studies. Some of you probably don't know what that is. I'm science. Um, 17 years at Hawker Grove Junior High as a counselor. The last 15 years here at Shawnee Mission Northwest. Also, as a counselor in these last four years, the counselor coordinator. I knew Nate before he came to Northwest. I had the privilege of attending some classes with him uh, after we had completed our masters. We drove back and forth, uh, probably about six weeks together, attending classes, and I got to know him very well. And I would say that in my 30 years in education, if I were to make a list of people with integrity, of good values, of sound mind, it would be Nate. Some of the characteristics that I've noted in Nate are that he is definitely a family man. He treasures his family. It's very important to him to provide for his family. 
and to be sure that they're safe and secure. This uh, last fall, I had the, or for summer actually in August, I had the privilege of, of attending the uh, 40th uh, wedding anniversary for he and his bride, Francis, who's here in attendance today. And he also kept Northwest populated. He had four sons. They all graduated from Northwest. So he did his job. He has eight grandchildren. The ninth is on the way. Uh, Craig, uh, his oldest son, is here today. And uh, Mike was here for a little while, but I think the program got a little bit long. No, there's Mike. He's in the back. Oh, and some grandchildren. He's given it himself in many ways. He was involved uh, in, very extensively in scouting, uh, education of the type of person he is. He's helped not only his kids, but most. If he tells you something, he will do it. You know it's the truth. He'll follow through. Secondly, he's genuine. There's no false pretenses. He's down to earth. Third, he's reliable. He missed very, very few school days. I will say just a few more in the last couple of months. They won't be fun. Right. <laughs> uh, another side to Nate, a lot of people don't know, is that uh, he's kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, a lot of times at lunch, if I'd be having trouble with my car, I could just you know bounce it off Nate, and they would say, "This is what it is." Or if he didn't know how to fix it. He could tell me the best repair shop in town. So that's a good friend to have. I have compiled a few comments from his colleagues, and I want to share those with you now. Bill Miller shared with me that Nate is steady, and he capitalized all the letters in steady. Always there, even keel. Sharon Weiber and Christy Smith shared with me Nate is professional, sincere, not easily ruffled, easy to get along with, caring, level-headed. Nancy Colley, unfortunately, is not here today. She's ill, but she started sharing some things also. And let me quote, because of his gentle demeanor, I think it would be easy for faculty and administration to underestimate how much his equilibrium has diffused many tense situations a superb counseling technique that I hope to master someday. I have office next to Nate for about two years and have overheard parts of enough interviews to know this to be true. I have great admiration for Nate's innate fairness. I have asked Nate one million questions in the last two years. Nancy's not here, and Nate told me it was only 100,000. <laughs> Never once did he express exasperation, put me and put me off. Never once did he suggest that as a veteran counselor, I ought to know the answer already. When he didn't know an answer, he began to check immediately. I'm talking about all kinds of questions, details about how we do it the Shawnee Mission way, ethical questions, advice about what needed to go to administration and what did not, and advice about an approach with a particularly difficult parent. <coughs> I will close with this poem from Susan Harkin. Hope I can do justice to it, Susan. If you look at the word gentleman, you'd likely see Nate's picture beside it. He is wise, serene, a diplomat, and so caring he could never hide it. He peruses all information when making a decision and then gets to the point with the calmest precision. Such an even hand, such an honest heart. No wonder we were all so sad when we heard that he would part. Always finding a clearing when things were a mess. No matter what the issue, always giving his best. Able to see beneath nose rings and orange hair <laughs> that there is a smart and sweet kid hiding under there. Listening with compassion as kids tell of their sadness. Listening with knowing as parents complain of the badness. With understanding, he guided us through many a situation. He listened to our complaints about limits and time, and once or twice, the administration. And that sneaky sense of humor that sometimes, that some describe as wry. We'll miss that too. We'll miss a lot about you and lots of us will cry. That's right.
tells it. It will be tough to leave when you think that uh, over half your life has been spent on a job, 15 years of it here and 17 years at a, one other building. So you can see I don't move around too much. I've lived 24 years in the same house and 10 years before that. So once I get someplace, I tend to stay. Northwest has always been a, a special place for me, uh, at least for the last uh, many years. Uh, as Jim mentioned, my four sons graduated from here. Three of them graduated before I got here. Uh, not very many of those teachers that were here when my oldest went through are still here. That would be Craig. He graduated in 79. Uh, Doug, who graduated in 81, is working today and couldn't be here. Mike, number three is here. He graduated in 83. And then uh, I came in 84, 85, and then my youngest son, Rusty, who graduated in 89. Uh, many of you did have as a student. So it's been my privilege to know you as the teachers of my children, and I appreciate that, and I thank you for that. When uh, I decided that 17 years was enough time in a junior high school and decided it was time to get on, my choice was to come to Northwest. I had known, worked with the counselors here for years through enrollment, and I knew they were a good group, and this is where I wanted to be, and I was fortunate to get to come to Northwest, so I consider myself blessed in that way. And blessed to have had the opportunity to work with the many fine people who have been here over the years. I would ditto what other people have said. You have a tough job and it gets tougher every year. And I would make one plug. I just wish that more of you who are non-members of NEA would see fit to join that organization. I've been a member for 36 years. And I'm convinced there are things they've done for me as a teacher, as a counselor. And I, I hope more of you will feel that way and join that organization. Thank you very much.
make a bet as to whose speech is the shortest. <laughs> and then I saw his wife pull out a video camera, and I knew I was going to compete very well. <laughs> as Jack told you, uh, my wife and I are presently building a home in uh, Warrensburg. We are going to be close to our single mothers. Uh, I will also be very close to my youngest daughter and grandson. Uh, my oldest daughter uh, lives here in Prairie Village. Uh, we picked Warrensburg because we're kind of going back to our roots. Uh, we're still close to the city, an opportunity to get here and shop and, and still be relatively close. Uh, <clears throat> once we get the house completed and, you know, construction people tell you about five months, which probably means seven. Uh, once that's done, uh, if you're ever traveling through Warrensburg, give me a call. You know, I might be able to afford a peanut butter and jelly or a bologna sandwich or something like that. I visit with a lot of you uh, since I announced my retirement, uh, said goodbyes to a lot of you. For those of you that I have not, goodbye, good luck, and I have enjoyed it.
I'm a numbers person. So anyway, I'm going to have to deal with that. Honestly, I've done everything. I just haven't put it on paper. <laughs> and I have all of the document. I mean, I don't have the uh, documentation. I have all the papers that I've graded and, and, you know, all the vocabulary. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it at this point in time, but I'll figure out something. Um, <laughs>